Looping through arrays is a very common thing for any programming language. The JavaScript array object has a native method called for each you can use to loop through the items of an array. In this video, I'll show you how to use the JavaScript array for each method to iterate over the items in that array. Hey everybody, it's Chris Love, the owner of Love to Dev, and in this video I want to just review how to use the JavaScript array for each method. Now this is a kind of a neat native method that belongs to the JavaScript array object that allows you to iterate over the items in the array. Now you can obviously use a traditional for loop and I do go over how to do uh, yeah, different one to the traditional loop this for each loop how to use lodash to do the exact same thing as well as jQuery's each method the the lodash uh, jQuery each and the native for each method all kind of have the same signatures and, and pretty much work the same way now this is uh, kind of supplemental to a blog post that I recently posted on how to loop over the items of an array I won't go over the four um, loop because I think that's pretty fundamental to most programming but that's essentially what we're doing here but it's going to be using a callback method so what I'm going to do is just go down to the section on using the JavaScript for each method now, this is a member of the JavaScript array object like I mentioned but it's going to be a function and what we'll do is I'll go over to the JavaScript console and what I'm going to do is declare our initial array and I'm just going to put four items in it, one, two, three, four, in strings. And then what we'll do is uh, we will go over how to use each one of these. I've kind of tested this out <clears throat> just to make sure it works. And basically this is what happens when we type in a for each and pass in a callback method to echo out the value. Now there are actually three parameters that are passed to the callback method. Uh, the first one is the element and that's what we're looking at right here and this for each method takes one parameter which is a callback method and in it, like I said so the first parameter is um, referred to as the element you could also say the value I use that a lot uh, when I actually use this in code and that is the actual object that is in the array and you can see right here just gonna log out element so it's just gonna go out one two three four now if I change this and we add the index, what this will do is give us the actual uh, item in the array reference. Remember the array is zero based. And just want to make sure, typing this up right, and then we'll hit. And what we get is the actual value again, but this time we get the uh, position in the array that corresponds to that particular item. Now the last method that we get is a copy of the actual array and I'm going to call it items because I always freak out about using something like an array there and what we'll do is we'll just echo this out and this will show us that we get the value, we get the index, and then we get the actual um, a copy of the array that's being iterated over. And you may be wondering, well, why does it do that? And I've often asked that question a lot too. And honestly, I think the real answer is it just gives you this so you can do a range of things that you might need to do against that particular array. Um, it just makes it a little easier for you because it is a copy, so you're not necessarily uh, screwing up the uh, original version of the array. That's the only thing I can think of. It's just helpful, and this is pretty standard. Um, if anybody's got any questions or comments on, on that, go ahead and feel free to do it. I just honestly haven't uh, bothered looking up too deep into it. I very rarely uh, ever use this full signature, and that's the cool thing I really like about JavaScript is it's very mutable. Generally, I'm just going to use the first version where we get the element or the actual value and use that. But it is nice to have the index and the uh, actual copy of the array. Occasionally, I will use that. Now, let's just uh, bump this up just a little bit more, just to kind of prove that point at a very simplistic level and just show that you can 
reference the individual items. So again, one, zero, one, two, one, two, and so forth. And that's pretty much it. it. So that's pretty cool. Now, let's just say we were doing uh, an array of objects. And I'm just going to do a couple of them right here. So we'll do foo and bar. And then we'll do uh, foo, or let's do this, fizz buzz. And if we set that, oh, sorry. Sometimes you just make typos when you're typing live. And that's OK. There we go. Now, if we go back through and we hit that, you can see this time we get foobar, which is the actual object, and fizzbuzz, which again is the actual object. So you're going to get whatever that value is at the in the array, and that's what you'll get. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's a string or a number or an object or another array. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you're iterating over this particular loop. Now, um, there is a little performance hit for when you use the for each method. Uh, and there are some JS bins out there that prove the point. Now, here's the reality. Um, unless your array is like really big, I don't think you're going to see that performance hit hit you too hard, except on, well, maybe some, you know, lower end mobile devices, which are not that uncommon these days, even with the, the proliferation of mobile devices. So just keep that in mind. If you're using this in a node object, node module, then, you know, it, you have control over the platform, obviously. So anyway, it's not a big deal to you. But, you know, if you're generally dealing with, uh, let's say, 100 or 200 or, or a few hundred items in a rate, probably not really going to notice the hit. But when you go up to several thousand, you're definitely going to be uh, feeling that a little bit. And you may want to drop back to using a traditional for loop. Uh, it may be a little more helpful for you. Now, there are some, uh, I would say, uh, sibling or cousin methods similar to this. The, uh, the whole map reduce uh, kind of methods um, can also be uh, useful uh, depending on what you need to do as part of manipulation. I'll try to make some videos showing how to use those here in the near future. So hopefully this has been helpful for you, uh, exposed you to a pretty nice little native feature in JavaScript. It's pretty much supported across the board in any modern browser, so you wouldn't really have to worry about this uh, not being supported. And of course, it's supported in Node. And uh, you can also use uh, ES6 notation on this. So if we wanted to do that and take out the function, uh, you get the same exact result. So uh, again, the ES6 notation works just fine here as well. And uh, so it's up to you how you want to implement it. And if you got any questions, feel free, free to leave those questions in the comments below. And I will try to get back to you as quickly as possible. I'm also going to have a link to that blog post in the description below as well. And as always, give us a big thumbs up if you think this is helpful for you and share it with your friends if you think it's helpful for them. And be sure not to miss any of my uh, videos by hitting that subscribe button. And that way you'll always know when I've posted something new. Thanks a lot, everybody. And, I, and again, hope this is helpful for you. And uh, thanks for watching.